When my children were growing up, I wanted to teach them the creation account of the Bible. They were going to school after all, and they were learning all about evolution. Well, to reinforce their belief in creation, I met Dr. Joe Martin, and he creates these wonderful videos about animals that defy evolution. And thank you, Dr. Martin, you were able to teach my children creation, and now they scoff at evolution. They know the difference between yeah, creation God. and evolution. They believe in the biblical account, yeah. and I credit God working through you and through your teachings over the mm -hmm. years, they gave my kids a strong biblical foundation. So yeah. thank you. God's grace. That's what it is. And now my grandchildren, Dr. Martin. So I appreciate your uh, your longevity and the Lord continuing to work through you, uh, your whole family indeed, uh, to His greater glory. Well, we pray He'll keep us going till He comes for us. Amen to that. Why did you feel called to teach the creation account? Because uh, you had this, you were a dentist, right? And you served a famous president at one time? I was a dentist, and I was the dentist for the 89th Military Airlift Wing. That's the presidential fleet during President Johnson's uh, term. In uh, the Air Force, so you were an Air, Air Force yes, officer at the I time. I was Air Force. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know anything about Air Force? Oh, well, we have a little <laughs> in common. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I became a professor of dentistry, Baylor College of Dentistry. Gave my first lecture on the evolution of teeth from fish scales. Fish and scales I, would turn into teeth. Fish, fish okay. scales moved into the mouth and became teeth. Amazing. Okay. Almost incredible, you would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was. I can't believe I believed it, but I did. But two students challenged me after that lecture to take a look at creation science. Young Earth, global flood, all those things. I didn't even pray about it. I just, oh, I'd love to do that. I'm thinking these guys are in the Stone Ages. I mean, the scientists have proven billions of years. A little did I know that they hadn't. Okay. Yes. So yeah, so I was an evolutionist. And then uh, because of studies with these students and looking at the assumptions evolutionists make, like we think, we believe, we posit, there's consensus. This suggests this is probably stuff they don't know. But if you don't look for those words, you're thinking they know what they're talking about. And so it's a fantasy. Yeah, it's all in their head when you come right down to it. So I, I, I became a biblical creationist. And sadly, to this day, government schools, as we call them, whether it's public uh, elementary schools, all the way through high school, universities are propagating evolution as the end all be all of science. And really, it is not scientific. Many scientists are realizing th this theory does not hold water today. Exactly. I mean, Harvard PhDs, you know, um, they're realizing the true science, not science based on assumptions and guesses, and, but true science, empirical, experimentally verifiable or falsifiable, whatever you want to say, always supports what the Bible says. My children loved your incredible creatures and creation proclaim series and stuff. Could you share with one animal that, that you believe proves that evolution is fake? Uh, my favorite was the giraffe, and of course everyone loves the bombardier bearder, but can you just share quickly one of the animals that defies evolution? Well, the giraffe is my favorite animal, too. Oh, okay. Really? And that's on our very first video we ever did. And I talk about it in my book, The Evolution of a Creationist. Excellent book. I've read and, it. And the fact is, you have to think, okay, you've got a bull giraffe, 18 feet tall. He's got a powerful pump to pump that blood up that long, skinny neck against gravity. Like, his heart weighs up to 25 pounds. It's like a big turkey in there. Mm. Okay. And when it squeezes, it shoots that blood up that long, skinny neck against gravity. He's doing great. Now he's going to bend his head down and get a drink of water. And the big pump goes squeeze, and the blood goes zoom and hits his brains and blows his brains out his ears. And he's thinking, I got a problem. When I get a drink of water, I blow my brains out. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to evolve something here to fix it. Well, no, dead animals can't improve themselves. They're dead. Okay, they can't evolve anything. But, of course, he doesn't blow his brains out because as he bends his head down, our Creator, the Lord Jesus, tells us that John 1, Colossians 1, yes. Hebrews 1, God the Father in the power of the Holy Spirit through the agency of Jesus created everything. So our Creator built little valves in the neck of the giraffe in the artery. And so as his head goes down, those little valves close. By the way, you can't have a partially evolved valve. They have to be fully functional from day one. So he's putting his head down, the valves close, but the last pulse of blood is, is beyond the last valve. It's under enough pressure to burst the little arteries in the brain. It doesn't go into the brain. It goes like whoop, under the brain in like this sponge of blood vessels. 
and it gently expands. He hadn't blown his brains out. He gets his drink of water. <laughs> he sees a lion coming up fast. I got to get out of here. That lion wants to eat me, jumps up three steps, boom, passes out. Not enough oxygen to the brain. Uh, okay. So what happens? The lion eats him and he's thinking, I got this other problem now. When I get up too fast, I, I blow my, I can't do this. The lions eat me. Uh -huh. and, and so, but of course, he doesn't pass out because as he comes up, the sponge under the brain gently squeezes that last pulse of oxygenated blood up into his brain. The valves open. He's doing just fine. Only God could do that. And oh he's God. irreducibly complex. He needs all his parts from day one. I love the uh, the woodpecker because I see them all the time. I don't see many bull giraffes in my neighborhood, <laughs> but uh, I hear and I see woodpeckers, yeah. and you have pointed out how God has wonderfully created them. But one of the things that, that someone pointed out to me, a friend, just recently was uh, a blessing in disguise from the last couple of years of angst and all of the misinformation surrounding the whole COVID pandemic. And we're not going down that rabbit trail, but the point that they made was people realize that so-called science is not always as trustworthy as the, the major media would purport because they're seeing through all the smoke and mirrors to realize these guys are making some of it up as they go. And so many people are now coming back to understand that scripture has validity and so-called science is really just a, a house of cards. Mm. There's fake news and there's fake science. Yes. And that's what it is. Yeah, but, I used to say they, fake science. Exactly, because they don't have any other option. There's, there's two options, God and creation, or no God, well then how do we get here? Evolution. So the only two options are out there. So once you decide, you know, I'm not going to believe in God, I've got quotes of the evolutionists just saying, hey, you know what? Louis Pasteur proved evolution isn't true. Can't be. Okay. And science proves creation is true. True science. But I'm not going to believe it because I don't want to believe in God. I mean, they're looking right at it. And they're, they refuse. Yeah. It's, wow. Oh, we here at Lamb and Lion Ministries are so passionate about this that we're going to have a streaming conference coming up on are. February 5th with Dr. Martin, Eric Hoven, Tim and myself. We're going to call it the Epic Battles of the Bible. Eric and uh, Dr. <laughs> uh, Martin are going to cover Genesis and Tim and I Revelation. And we might want to spill the beans ahead of time. We, we don't want people to think that Genesis and Revelation are at odds with no, each other, but that they harmonize. So check us out on our Christ in Prophecy YouTube channel or our website, ChristinProphecy.org. We have more information. We want you to join us at the Epic Battles for the Bible conference. And Dr. Martin, how can people get in touch with your ministry? Well, we have a web page. Um, what is it? BiblicalDiscipleship.org. BiblicalDiscipleship.org. Yes. Okay. Because even understanding creation from a biblical perspective really lays a foundation for discipleship that, that opens the entire Word of God. It's not just a story that is relegated to the beginning. That lays the foundation for everything else that follows. And it ties to God's revelation of the end times. He was the only eyewitness to both of those bookends of the Bible. And those are two things you don't find being taught in the churches. No. They don't teach creation and they don't teach prophecy. Well, we're going to fix that in our uh, streaming conference coming up, as Nathan Good. said. But we're so glad that you have dedicated your life to laying that foundation and to creating disciples for Jesus Christ. If Jesus isn't the Creator, how could He be the Savior? Because only the Creator would have the right and the authority to save His particular creature. Amen. So our Creator is our Savior. Praise God. The Lord Jesus. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God.